This is a um, summary of a paper that we presented uh, at a conference in China uh, a year or two ago. It summarizes uh, uh, the position of China uh, in competing for world leadership in science and technology. It was written by three people from WTEC, Patricia Folan, Jeff Holdridge, and myself, along with an Indian colleague, uh, Aparna Basu, who's an expert in this field too. This is just a subset of the slides that we showed at that conference. We've been measuring world leadership in science and technology for many years. Um, that's what WTEC does. We do it two ways with uh, peer review by sending delegations of American experts abroad to visit the leading research groups. And second, uh, with quantitative indicators like papers and patents. Our first paper was at the leading conference in this field, uh, ISSI, in 2003 in Beijing, China. At that time, the race for world leadership was only between the European Union and the United States. China was not yet uh, a contender. In fact, China was quite backward at that time, it was considered to be an underdeveloped country in science. Uh, in the 1970s, uh, it had been in the throes of the Cultural Revolution where all the universities were closed and science was at a standstill, in fact. So it was uh, just making a recovery in 2003. However, by the, the 2009 conference in Rio de Janeiro, it had become a three-way race because China had made incredible progress. At that time, we had only 2005 data available, but uh, despite the, the big leap to 2017, we predicted, if present trends continued, that China would lead the world. So we'll take a look at the graph that uh, presents that data in a moment. In 2017, that same conference, ISSI, was back in big city in China, Wuhan in the center of the country. So we revisited this forecast to see whether it came true or not. This is the outline of that talk. Um, China actually has a very long history of uh, world leadership in science and technology if you go back a ways. Um, we'll review those forecasts of China resuming leadership and uh, We'll talk about quantitative indicators as one way of doing this, as well as qualitative measures. But in number four there, we'll uh, talk about why, what's, what's the reason behind China's rapid rise in science. There's a third way of measuring leadership using alternative metrics based on social media. So we'll say a few words about that and of course conclude with the bottom line. There's a couple of slides here about China's history. Um, most Westerners don't study Eastern history so much, but uh, China is one of the cradles of civilization like Egypt and the uh, um, Mesopotamia Valley and the um, Indus R River Valley in, in India. So th their civilization goes way back, far beyond anything seen in Europe and uh, the Americas. And even in millennia ago, uh, the Chinese had developed lots of science and technology accomplishments like the control of fire and, you know, um, iron making and other metal making, metallurgy, organized agriculture on a giant scale leading to um, biological sciences, grand engineering projects like the Great Wall and the Grand Canal. Um, and for most of recorded history, China, in fact, led the world in science and technology. Here's a slide that just shows a couple of those uh, ancient inventions. Most people know that uh, the Chinese invented uh, the compass, which allowed uh, marine navigation and exploration. Uh, most people know that they invented gunpowder, which had a big effect on warfare and uh, national security. Uh, 
they also invented paper making and printed books and uh, lots of other things as well. Uh, these really are technologies, you might say, based on scientific discoveries and the Chinese even today tend to focus more on applied science that pays more immediate dividends than basic or fundamental science. Here's that key graph uh, with the forecast of uh, uh, paper leadership from the Rio conference in 2009. Um, we focus on publication of scientific papers as a leading uh, output indicator because uh, it's perhaps the best single indicator of which country is in the lead in science. And this graph shows the, the situation in 2005. If you look at that vertical arrow, it shows the data to the left that we had available in 2009. And everything to the right of that uh, arrow is uh, a forecast based on a math model. We didn't simply uh, um, extrapolate trends and papers as many people do, but we built a math model tying this output measure of scientific performance and papers to the input resources in national research and development funding, so-called GERD, that makes it possible. So using that math model, we were able to forecast that China would come out of nowhere and actually overtake Europe and the United States in um, um, publications as measured by its share of uh, world publication. Obviously, as China increases its shares, the other two must decrease because this is really a zero-sum game. They have to add up to 100%. Okay, here's the results of that um, forecast. We uh, prepared this chart in 2017 for the Wuhan conference. And um, it shows that the forecast more or less came true. The uh, red curve is China, and uh, it has risen up to uh, pass up the United States, the blue curve. Did not quite achieve the forecasted crossing of the uh, EU curve. Um, there are two versions of that, the two green curves. The one on top is the uh, original EU 28, with 28 countries. And the lower one is... Uh, what you might call a U27 after the departure of the UK because of Brexit. And uh, in that sense, uh, uh, China did pass up both Europe and the United States. We didn't just look at uh, scientific paper publication as an output uh, indicator. We also looked at a bunch of other indicators like the ones in this table. Um, Gross domestic product, uh, GERD is R&D investment at the national level, the number of researchers, PhD graduates in science and engineering, paper share we've talked about, uh, patents as a measure of applied science, citation to paper as a measure of quality, high technology manufacturing and, and exports. And in all cases, uh, uh, China is rising rapidly. Uh, the uh, dates in parentheses are dates when it will pass uh, its Western competitors uh, um, or has already passed them. Here's just one of those uh, indicators. This is GERD, which is uh, National uh, Investments in Research and Development. Um, this is for the set of uh, industrialized nations in the OECD about 43 countries there, including the European Union countries, the United States, and China. Again, the red line is China, passing up uh, the other countries in R&D investment. Um, again, blue is the United States, green is the European Union, uh, both with and without the uh, UK. And this, this is important because this is the driver for other output indicators like papers and patents. This bar chart here uh, um, returns to the subject of R&D investment. 
uh, it shows the real percent increase in um, R&D investment over the previous year. And again, red is China, blue is the United States, green is the European Union. And as you can see, China has a long-term plan, which it's implementing to increase its R&D investment. Um, it, it goes up by some 10 or 20 percent every year over this period when Europe and the United States are lucky to rarely get up to even um, 5 percent. And this is, this is really the engine that drives um, the outputs in um, other indicators like papers and patents. Those slides uh, reviewed uh, the situation as far as quantitative indicators are concerned. But the second way of measuring scientific leadership is with uh, qualitative measures like peer review. That's what WTEC does. We send delegations of uh, Americans to the leading labs around the world, uh, funded by the US government. Uh, they use the results to uh, make um, funding decisions on, on research. The US government chooses uh, the topics. Uh, each delegation looks at a particular technology. Uh, we've done over 80 of these. Um, and uh, this is far more than any other organization has done. Until the year 2000, we only sent delegations to Europe and Japan because those were the countries that were uh, challenging the United States for leadership. But subsequently, uh, we've also sent our delegations to China because they made incredible progress. And briefly, uh, our findings show that Chinese research groups have rapidly improved, but uh, many of them tend to uh, still follow uh, Western discoveries. Many of those Chinese researchers, in fact, got their education in the West. Here's a sample of just uh, four topics uh, where uh, we sent delegations to China and they had high praise for uh, Chinese accomplishments. This slide talks about biomanufacturing and nanomaterials. And the next one, a couple of other technologies, uh, the uh, science of convergence of uh, technologies and stem cell engineering. Here's another uh, uh, qualitative uh, method of uh, assessing science. This is a busy chart. So let me see if I can focus your attention on just a small part of it. The top row uh, is uh, the current situation and the bottom row is uh, a uh, forecast of what might happen to happen in 2036 some 20 years after the first um, assessment there are two different samples involved both uh, were knowledgeable about uh, international leadership in science uh, the ones on the left were from um, authors of papers in the leading scientometric journal and the, um, uh, and the ones on the right were um, people who had participated in WTEC's uh, scientific delegations assessing leadership abroad. If you'll focus your attention on the, the bar graphs on the far left of each of these quadrants, um, you see that on the top row that currently both groups uh, believe that the United States is far in the lead of, of um, China. Uh, a, a rather different conclusion than what we saw in the quantitative indicators like papers and patents. Uh, on the bottom row, uh, 20 years from now, you see that uh, our respondents uh, believe that China has a good chance of assuming leadership in that time frame, about 20 years in the future. In both cases, uh, we had N equal 100 um, valid responses. And uh, again, these were people who were selected to be uh, knowledgeable about this subject, not, not just uh, random choices off the street. Here are the conclusions. Um, as I've said, quantitative indicators like papers suggest that China will pass the United States to lead the world in science and technology. 
And by the way, this is the conclusion that the National Science Foundation made in its most recent Science and Engineering Indicators report in 2018. But that's focusing only on half of the picture, uh, these quantitative indicators. If you look at qualitative indicators, like surveys and peer reviews and stuff like that, um, th that presents a uh, more nuanced uh, picture that uh, many of these uh, uh, knowledgeable people say that China is not there yet. They suggest it may even be 20 years or more for China to take the lead. Just a word about altmetrics, alternative metrics. Um, uh, China shuts out the main social media sites like uh, Google, Facebook, Twitter, that these uh, metrics are based on. And so it, it's not really uh, um, reasonable to assess China's uh, results with all metrics. Finally, uh, here's the bottom line conclusion. China has made enormous progress in an incredibly short period of time. It's challenging the West for scientific leadership. Um, and that's important. Um, it, you know, the National Science Foundation was founded by President Truman in 1950 to maintain United States leadership in science and technology. Why? Because it had proven to be decisive in winning World War II. Um, and uh, so there are national security implications as well as uh, pure science and economic implications of this leadership. In selected technologies, uh, targeted technologies, our delegations have in fact found that China has, uh, has equal or even passed the United States in uh, applied science fields. <coughs> Consequently, although our paper concludes that China still has a long way to go in general, uh, in its targeted areas, uh, it uh, has arrived and certainly deserves a great deal of credit for those efforts.